Don't apologize, don't say you're sorry. Just show up and give it all you got. Well, guys, that is the start of the Age Gap Realms podcast this week. Did you get that? Awesome. Brennan, do you want to sing that song one more time? No. Yeah, it's already on camera, so you might as well just finish it. I don't remember what I sang. (laughs) Why don't you talk about our topic for today, which you just sang beautifully as the intro. Don't apologize for your age. Actually, what we're going to be talking about today, guys, is how to stop apologizing for your age. Don't apologize. Stop apologizing. Please sing the song. I don't remember what I did there. I don't remember. Give it a go. Don't apologize for your age. I don't know what I said. That's great. You're (laughs) nailing it. All right. So when it comes to stop apologizing and not and discontinuing apologizing for your age, one of the reasons I want to get into this is because as you and I have been talking more recently about your early career, like in your 20s, and what I'm doing in my 20s, we found some commonalities between, well, actually, the, the way this really started was... I was using my age as a reason for why I couldn't do something. A crutch. Yes. And you pointed out to me how you chose not to do it because you chose to never even acknowledge your age when you were young. And I think I, I think you've heard a thousand times over that you are well beyond your age and yet you still were using your age as a justification why maybe you weren't going to do something. Yeah. And I use it. I almost I bring up my age in order to kind of deflect certain situations. Whereas your point was to stop, just don't even talk about your age. Like nobody needs to know, don't even draw focus. Don't draw attention to the thing that you don't want people being focused on. Yeah, I mean, what you spend your time thinking about is what you talk about, right? So when it comes to how to stop apologizing for your age, I also don't think that this just applies to somebody in their 20s. I think that this is a bigger theme at any point in your life. When you're young, you apologize for your age because you might not have the experience that other people have or that the person that you have, the person that you want to to be like in your career has, but you still want that job. Or when you're older, you start to apologize for your age because you might be the older person in the room and you might not know technology quite as well. So there's, there's any way you look at the coin there's a reason to apologize for your age, regardless yeah, of what age I, you I, are. And, and maybe people are going, I don't apologize for my age, but but definitely the flip side to not apologizing for your age is using your age as a crux or a, as a crutch or as an excuse for um, why maybe you can't excel or achieve something. And, and we hear that all the time. Yesterday, I was thinking about my age. Yesterday, I tried to summit with my father Mount Hood. And, and he's 104. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to bring up early on. I was thinking that my dad is 61. He's going to be 61 in a, about a month. And here I am. I'm quite a bit younger than him. And I'm going to be able to be in better shape. And I, I there was just, I had some concerns about him early on doing this. And as we were doing it, I was very proud of, I mean, he, he, wanted to go on probably further than I actually Well, did. your dad, I mean, your dad's a <clears throat> animal. I mean, he's he really he like I can't I have a hard time keeping up with him and uh but he thinks all the time about how to keep himself in shape and how to ke- stay active and how because to keep pushing himself. Because he doesn't act his age. And I don't yep. think at any time in my dad's life he has ever acted his age. I don't act my age from a professional standpoint, from a relationship standpoint, and you also don't act your age. So there's this concept, there's this idea of we should be apologizing for our age because we're never young enough or we're never old enough to have the experiences. And yet people who tend to be successful in life don't have some set age that they're trying to meet up to or live up to at any point in time. You know, it's funny because uh, I've never really heard people describe different phases of your life but Grant talks about cycles I heard him talking about cycles and I think you you were there too and and it really caught my attention because uh, I started having some conversations with actually I was having a conversation the other night at the concert with a good friend's son Mm -hmm. and he's 20 years old Mm -hmm. Um, and he was talking about like school and working and all this and I said look you know um, he asked me about myself. He said, so, so you're, you've been successful. And I said, I skipped 
two full cycles. And he goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, I came out of school. I didn't go, I, I didn't go to college. I went for um, six months, but I came out of high school. I skipped the cycle of college. Mm -hmm. um, so I went straight into career. And then I skipped the cycle of being comfortable in an organization until my mid to late 30s, even though I had kids and I had all these things. And I went straight to from working in a company for five or six or seven years to straight to entrepreneur. And and so by the time I'm 50, most people that start businesses um, or run as an executive companies are in their late 30s, mid 40s because they have to have that career behind them. And I went straight there at 27. So, But part of me, you just said you skip cycles. And what's actually interesting about your story is I don't think you skipped them. You actually just shortened them. It, within six months of going to college, you realized college wasn't for you and that you could yeah, make good money and you had opportunities elsewhere. You did work inside a traditional organization and you realized very quickly you didn't wait for all of that dis discomfort and dissatisfaction to settle in after years. You're like, this this shit doesn't work for me. Yeah, I gotta seven get years out. of grinding and I was like, I'm, I'm not going to do this my whole life. I'm going to do something for, build something. Yep. Yeah. So you didn't, you didn't actually You're right. Skip. I, I pulled them forward. Yeah, you yep. just shortened Because I had kids and I had all the things that you. So what, I, I would say I've done the exact same thing. I agree. 100%. What... Which is probably why we love each other. Probably. It might, might be one of them. I see a reasons. lot of myself in you outside of the uh, stunning attractiveness. Oh, but you're so cute. <laughs> uber intelligence. Outside of that, I see myself in you. Oh, isn't that nice? It's very sweet. No, but what do you think, as we want to you know, educate our listeners and the people that are watching the show around the age piece, not apologizing for the age piece, but also... I think what we're really talking about is when no matter what age you are, when you have that feeling, that sinking feeling that's in your gut that you need to make a change and that whatever it is in your life, that what cycle you're in isn't working for you, how do you not use your age to say, well, I should go to college for the next three and a half years because that's what my parents are telling me to do, but instead... I'm going to shorten it for six months because I, or two six months because I know that this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I think about, I think about the influences of people you have in your life. I remember uh, Mason and Ashley and Misty and it's same with your parents five years ago or whatever. Um, when they had these high ambitions right out of school, like they wanted I had convinced them they could go conquer the world. They didn't need to go get a traditional job and do all that. And their parents were all very, what are you doing to our kids? You know, uh, why would you tell them these things? You're, what are you trying to trick them into? And and it was like all those superstar performers, because they all grew to being substantial uh, presidents and EVPs and huge contributors. Um, and they've made a lot more money than any of their family had made, right? And, and, but everyone d disbelieved that they were on a real trajectory to succeed, but they were on their trajectory. They mm -hmm. wanted what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think about how many people in your life impose their false or limited beliefs mm -hmm. as a instructional way to live your life because they didn't do it. And so, therefore, they can't see, even though they'd love it for you, they're not trying to hold you back. They don't believe it because they didn't see it. Mm -hmm. And and yet, I think a lot of young people, like myself, like you, need to make your firm, learn to make your firm decisions and live and die by them. Mm -hmm. But don't apologize for them. Learn from them and move forward. I would say for me, what allowed me to be able to be confident in making those decisions was having people around me that did it. Now, the, the people around me might not have been as young as I was making bold choices, but early on in my career, early on in our relationship, I did find people out there through blogs or through some of the people that I worked with that were just so courageous and so bold in how they lived their life that I truly got confidence through spending time with them, through reading their work, through just involving myself with them to realize that the pull that I was feeling, that like I acknowledged the discomfort 
And then I recognized that the pull that I was feeling from a positive influence for the change that I needed to make needed to be stronger than the people or the things that I was surrounding myself with that were negative influences. And I th- hindsight being 2020, I don't know that I really cognitively realized I was doing this at the time, but I just kept pulling myself towards these positive Examples. change agents instead of the negative change agents in my life and just separated myself so that I could feel good about these changes or or my age or my experience or even you early on in my career. And I'll never forget, you gave me this project. Um, we were shopping for a, um, a new, what would you call it? A new assessment platform and within my first like six months on the job, you said, I need you to call all of these other platforms and I need you to price shop them and compare what they have to offer versus what the one that we're shopping has to offer. And I just said yes to you because obviously I wasn't gonna say, well, how do I do that? But then I went and asked this woman, okay, how do I have these conversations? Do I just pick up the phone and ask them what their pricing is? Like, I just, I had no idea even where to start. We didn't, you didn't even tell me what companies to be comparing them to. And in in that moment, in that process, she was so helpful. You were so helpful in just giving me the ability to do those things. And I didn't know that I could even think about being in a position to shop those things. And now it's very easy for me to price shop and compare and negotiate, but that was a skill that you just automatically assumed I could have and take well, no, on. It a, it, so, so I think one of the things I'm most proud about in my career is finding young aspiring people who want to succeed mm-hmm. and using myself as an example of how they can do that so that they have the confidence to move forward and do it, right? Mm-hmm. And and I, I, I love that. And you know I love it. You know I really uh, enjoy being around high energy, high performing younger people who quite honestly just crush it compared to lifers that are working in mediocrity, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 it's your passion. If, if you get people young enough and they're inspired enough, um, or they're internally motivated, and you can inspire them, then you can hand projects off and tell them to go figure it out. And the difference between the people who have the courage that go ask good questions, then do good work, and then produce a result are those that want to succeed. And that's a natural filter I have because had you taken that project and done a crappy job and come back, which other people had, Mm -hmm. I would have said, I'm not giving that project to, I'm not giving you another project, right? Or told you that I couldn't do it. Or if you said, I don't know how to do it and your your courage was low. Yep. Yeah. So I think you were going to do a show at some point called Just Say Yes. Mm -hmm. Like people don't just say yes enough. They they immediately go to this place where they try to rationalize, find excuses. And unfortunately, from a role model standpoint, most young people are being told how they need to do things by people who don't have the personal reference points of accelerating their career. And they've taken the safe route themselves. So they almost paint a picture of it's irresponsible. You can't do this. Here's how you need to do it. Here's how, and, and instead of saying, look, you can do anything you want to do. Let's point you to any example of anything that you want to become or create yourself. Let's go, let me as a parent, go find those people with you and then let's study what they did. And then you say, okay, am I willing to make that same commitment or not? And do those things versus what really happens. You need to go to school. You need to get a good job. You need to learn to cut your teeth. You need to become responsible. And I get that because, you know, when you're 20 years old and you're not even doing your own dishes at home. Right. That's a whole different level of uh, lack of responsibility. But I I was 20 and I didn't do my own dishes, but I just thought, you know what, hit the road and travel 16 states and have the company pay for me to stay in a hotel every night and I'll sell stuff. Like I didn't have to do any dishes. I ate out every night. Right. Right. There's ways to solve you problems. You still don't do your dishes. Because I don't do dishes. I have somebody else do my dishes, yeah. right? And and because if you, I have to do you spend do it, your time focusing on what you can do in order to make money so that you don't have to do the things you do. There are plenty of people that do, do a do. phenomenal job doing but dishes. Didn't you do dishes at one point in your I life? I do dishes. I know how to. But He's I'm actually saying, really good. He's much better than I am at doing dishes, guys. He's really good at it. She's, 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 I don't, I don't do it very well. I don't think that's something her mom ever made her do. <laughs> the point is... But I don't think that she did ever make. Well, yeah, she did. The point is, I can do all that stuff, but I choose not to do it. 
I know you can do all of that no, stuff. No, I'm saying, though, that like, as a, as a young person, like, mm-hmm. to, to go into the beginning of the show. About apologizing for your age. Apologizing for your age. People are conditioned to not think for themselves, to not do for themselves, to not stretch beyond their own current level of belief or awareness. They're not pointed to people that could be phenomenal examples because the people that are influencing them or guiding them haven't done that. Mm-hmm. And there's more people that haven't done that that look for rationales or excuses or or fault in something or have a low level of belief that they would rather not see other people go succeed because they're challenged by what choices they've made. So to wrap this up, what would you say the top two takeaways are from your perspective on how somebody could stop apologizing for their age? Um, <clears throat> Numero uno. Number one is... We're going to Mexico in a couple days, guys, so we're going to start speaking Spanish here right now. Number one is stay courageous. Don't let like other that. people... Don't let other people's insecurity or fears or disbelief pull you away from something that you really want to dream about. For me, watching the TV show um, Wall Street and thinking about ringing the opening bell or going to New York, it was such a fantasy, but I kept imprinting it in my mind. And then by the age of 29, I was ringing the opening bell of the American Stock Exchange in Wall Street. Nobody believed it. I had to come home and show pictures and videos. And then what would you say number two would be? Number two would be intentionality. Like no one's going to take you serious if you don't take yourself serious. You you can't you, if you're not studying or finding the example, and you're not studying it, and you're not intentional about understanding it and putting a plan in place to do what somebody did that that you want to follow in those footsteps. Who's going to take you serious if you just talk about it? Mm. So action and intentionality behind talking about it. I would say my first one would be finding people around you who have done or exhibit the characteristics that you're looking to create in yourself. I agree. Like spending time with those people, finding those people. If you're in a work environment, if you're in a school environment, go attract yourself, go attract to yourself to the most successful person in the rooms that you're in. Like think of every single room that you walk into and it is your responsibility to connect with the person that clearly has their shit together in the most clear way. Now, I I get that it can be hard to sometimes figure that out, but introduce yourself to the professor, introduce yourself to the person who's getting the A, introduce yourself to the person who's the VP, like make yourself connected to the people who are doing things and disassociate yourself with the people who are sitting back and complaining, who aren't creating and don't have a, a picture for what they want to create in the future, who aren't really choosing to live their lives in a way that you want to be living. Like stop hanging out with the people that you're hanging out with if you're wanting to not apologize for your age and you're wanting to just go out and conquer the world. So my first word was courage, which I think you covered off really well right there in that example. And my second word was intentionality, which being specific and clear about who and what and how and when, what would be the third from your perspective? So courage, intentionality. You just got really sassy. Those were, that was what I wanted to say. Why did you just get like- No, I said, you just you just explained why I said courage and intentionality. I, no, I'm I said not, surround yourself with successful people. I feel like it. you're you gotta like be putting, intentional. I'm, no, you got to be intentional to do that. You that you just talked about and being specific and being intentional. All right, guys, I feel What's like sassy third? Brandon just came out. I'm not, I'm I just, just gave my perspective. You don't have to challenge me on what my third thing is. I just said what I believe that you have to do in in rooms. <laughs> I just like, tried. You said you asked me. To give to describe. You never three. asked me, so then I said what my two are. No, I, babe, but I didn't get to the third. So I only asked you for two. Why do you need three? So what are the top three things? No, I said two. You did? Oh, yeah, I did say oh, two. So I thought I'm sorry, I thought you said three. No, but what I I'll said say two. is that I don't you don't need you don't get the chance. Courage to say and third. intentionality was just well described by everything you said. So we're a hundred percent in alignment. Of course we're in hundred percent alignment. That's why we do these things. I know. Besides I love it. when you hear me say three and I actually I say swore two. You said three. No. We're going to go back and listen to it. But just in case, what would be the third? The third thing that somebody needs in order to stop apologizing for their age is, I would say, a belief in themselves. That's a good one. Like you have to believe in yourself and what your ability is that you can contribute to the world, what your 
real dreams are, what your gut is telling you, I keep kind of referencing that, like what is that feeling inside of you that really gets you fired up or that makes you feel like you can do something more than you're doing and how do you harness that to garnish that and 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 light that in yourself every single day in order to make it so that your age doesn't matter it's just about what you're doing and how you're choosing to show up every single morning when you wake up like really paying attention to how you're believing in yourself having that self empowerment yeah it's something you're actually really big on i mean you talk you talk in a lot of different ways about that self empowerment is something you're mm-hmm. passionate about teaching people to do, I think. Yeah. And I appreciate having you around because when I do slip into moments of you know, like my ultimate gut check, like when I slip into moments of fear or insecurity or uh, apologizing for my age, you remind me that I don't need to do those things because I do have such a high belief in myself that I just need to go all in on what I believe, not go all in on the things that I'm insecure about. Like I don't need to talk about the things that I'm insecure about because I do believe so highly in my ability to create what I want and to have what I want. And so it goes both ways. I don't want to teeter totter. You started the show talking about not apologizing for your age. I mean, I was the same way with using technology and social media. Mm -hmm. And I was almost like saying, making up excuses that I don't need to do this. My career has been successful enough. And you're like, if you want people to know you, you want people to trust you, you want people to like you, you want people to understand you, you need to do this, right? Yeah. And Grant has really pushed me on that as well. But mm-hmm. but I was using that as that same limited belief crux of, I don't need to do this. And now that I've been doing it, I actually have learned to enjoy it. I have fun with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was so awkward at first. It was awkward, but it was... We get to look back and watch your, those videos of you early on or the things that you posted early on in the same way that we get to watch, for me, this show and how how we put these ideas together and these concepts together because they're the baby steps in order to get to the thing that we really want. But that belief, I would say, is like the highest priority number one to keep leaning into. I think the whole reason you wanted to shoot this particular episode is to encourage people on both ends of the spectrums. I kind of hate it when you do this. The thing, like, I just say what you want to do because I feel like when you tell me what I want to do, you're like, (laughs) here we go. So there's, well, I'm just, don't tell me what I want to do. Okay, so just so, just so we're clear, I'm thinking that you told me at the beginning of the show that one of the things you wanted to make sure happened is that you encouraged and empowered people to think for themselves and go out and be bold. So the three things I heard just on your show uh, is courage, intentionality, and Bold, being bold, right? Is that what you said? Well done, babe. I love doing these shows with you. I love doing these shows with you. And I know 100% absolutely flawlessly that your intention on this show is to help other people. It is. You talked about it all morning, so I get to be participating with you on that, and it makes me very proud. You and your squeaky chair over there. All right, guys, this is the end of today's Age Gap Realness podcast. We will catch you next week. Yeah, thank, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for being here. <laughs> your first time as an official guest. That's right.